All right, next one. This is one of my personal favorites that I really, really wanted to get into. Chilled martini glasses. How many times you go into a bar and I don't know when this started. I guess maybe five or 10 years ago, this became really, really hot. You go into a bar and you order two or three martinis and the first thing the bartender does is take the martini glasses and put them up on the bar, fill them with ice, and then fill them with, I don't know why, seltzer water. Why seltzer water? I have no idea. But they do seltzer water. Some people use regular water. Some people just use ice, right? And the theory is that that's gonna give you a colder martini. That's at least the perception on the customer's part, right? So I wanted to see now, does that actually wash? Does that actually happen? So, I'm sh the quote that I love this, I'm sure you know, I'm sure you know that using a chilled glass is going to keep the drink colder for longer. There's nothing quite like pouring a cold drink in a warm glass. And that's from Ask Your Bartender Martini Advice. So let's go ahead and see how that works. Um, and again, you can go ahead and check out the independent variable is the temperature of the glass. The dependent variable is the temperature of the drink. And for the people who want the geeky stuff, there's the slide with the controls. So here's our methodology. We went ahead and measured equal samples at equal drink temperatures into three different glasses. One was at ambient temperature, room temperature. One was actually chilled using the glass, ice, and water method that you see here. And the third was pre-chilled in a cooler, which we have had this glass pre-chilled in this water bath, which gets it down to about 40 degrees. All right, and I've actually used all three methods. And I wanted to see what the effect on the drink was of these three methods. So here's our results. The top line is ambient glass. So the drink starts at about 33 degrees and goes up to about 46 degrees. Not too shabby. 40 degrees is my cutoff for service temperature, just by the way. So that's a properly chilled drink in an ambient temperature glass. The next two lines, the, the pink line, or lilac, as Nicole told me is the correct color, is in a cooled glass, that's using the ice method, and the bottom line is in a chilled glass using a cooler. All right, so we can see that there is a difference. Let's go ahead and analyze the data and see exactly what that difference amounts to. This graph gives us at any given time, what is the difference in temperature between the chilled glass and the ambient glass, or between the cooled glass and the ambient glass. This is the key graph, because what this tells us, let's say we just go out to about eight minutes. You can see that for the cooled glass, you're only gaining about four degrees Fahrenheit versus serving the drink in a regular room temperature glass. And that's for just using the ice cooled method. For the chilled glass, you're gaining about four and three quarters degrees. Right, and that's over a 10 minute life of the drink. So now you have to ask yourself as a bartender or, or as a consumer, is a three minute, a three degree temperature variation really significant? Is that something that we think is really gonna make a difference in, in the enjoyment of the drink? Sometimes the answer is yes, 100%. Sometimes you need to think, well, maybe in this situation, not really that big a deal. But the thing to keep in mind is all we're really talking about is three degrees Fahrenheit. Now, I want you to remember that number because we're going to come back to that later. So we do have samples of the Drambuie Golden Nail coming out. And we went ahead and served those in room temperature glasses. And those are properly chilled drinks so that you can get a sense of how that is. Um, the other thing that I did was I went ahead and I graphed, given any given glass temperature, what is the predicted average drink temperature over the life of about 10 minutes? So you can see here, room temperature, about 74 degrees is all the way over on the left. Chilled in a refrigerator is already all the way over on the right. So ma the maximum cooling capacity that you're gonna get between ambient and chilled is about 35 degrees to 39 degrees or about four degrees. All right, so that's all you're really gonna gain if you chill the glass to its absolute maximum is about four degrees. So yes, the, the, uh, the null hypothesis stands. Chilling a martini glass does keep the drink colder for a longer time after service. However, the average drink temperature is about three degrees, and that only gives you about five extra minutes. If you go back to the time versus temperature chart, the time of a chilled glass is equal to the time of an unchilled glass about five minutes ahead, right? So you're getting about a five minute life on the drink. Um, the rates of temperature, however, and this was interesting, the rates of temperature are comparable. And this is something that Dave pointed out. 
I think what a lot of people expect when they actually do this is that when they chill the martini and then put it in the glass, the glass is then going to continue to chill the martini. And that doesn't happen. We don't see any maintenance of, if we go back to this slide here, it immediately, in all three cases, the drink starts to warm up immediately. There's no additional cooling provided by the glass. And I want you to remember that too because that is important.